to some remark and you need okay. to write something. So we are doing our chemistry assignment. That is a question uh, or con formula equations and amounts of substance, multiple choice one. Now, um, the mass of magnesium ion in one kg of sea water is this. The concentration in parts per million. So did you find the formula parts per million? Uh, yeah, parts per million is equal to mass of solute over mass of solution times 10 to the power 6. Mass of solute upon? Yeah, mass of solution. Good. So, so 1 kg means 1000 gram. Yeah. And into what? 10 power what? 6. 10 to the power 6. So now do this. You have told me the formula. I have shown you the working. Um, and in this case, I would have put 1.3 grams over 1 kg or is it 1 kg over 1.3 grams? Convert kg into gram. <clears throat> yeah, I know. That'll be like a thousand. So like, would it be 1.3 over a thousand? The solution here would be... Uh, 1.3 upon thousand, right? Perfect. Okay, okay. Let me just do it then. Which is, oh, sorry, but then answer time 1300. I don't know if that's the... how it can be 1300. It's 1. 1.3 grams over 1000 grams. Okay, achha, achha, which is one... not, I'm sorry, you're not giving me the answer in scientific notation. So give me the answer in scientific notation. W 1.3 times 10 to the power minus 3. Very good. Minus but if, three. Yeah, yeah, but if I if I do it times 10 to the power 6, right, it becomes 3. Yeah. Positive 3. Yeah. Yeah, it's 1, 2, 3. Yeah, 1 1.3 times 10 to the power 3. Yeah. Good. Calculate the total number of ions in 7.41 gram of calcium hydroxide. The molar mass of calcium hydroxide is 74.1. The Avogadro constant is this. What's the formula? Number of particles is equal to number of moles into Avogadro number. What is the is... formula for number of moles? Mass. Do the working with me. Yeah. M over molar mass. What is Avogadro number? Six, ti six times 10 to the power 23. So M here is going to be 7.41. Yes. We have N. Oh, sorry, no. Molar mass is 74.1. Sorry. And then times that, yeah. I'm just putting it in the calculator completely correctly. Okay. Six times 10 to the power 23. Gives me 5.99 times 10 to the power 22. So six times 10 to the power 22. Six point. Can you repeat the number, please? Six point. Six point, six point zero times 10 to the power 22. Uh, strange. Why the power of 10 is not changing? But anyways, double no, check. It basically that. does. It basically does just becomes 22, not 23. 22. No, but yeah. I was that. Uh... Seven point four over 74.1 times 6 times 10 to the power 23. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm. Six times ten to the power twenty-two. Uh, Euro twenty-three here. I I wrote six point zero. 
<laughs> yeah, but it's twenty two, not twenty three, last night. Yeah. And he's talking about you no know, something is happening wrong. The total number of ions. So let me correct. I have written by mistake a two here. So let me remove that two. No, no, I, I just put six, six times ten to the power twenty. I didn't put the O two. Ah, that's good. Acha. Then what you are getting actually, you're getting. It's a, uh, it's it's a part and like answer a. That's what I got. Yeah, you are getting six into ten power twenty-two. Acha, make it clear. These are the ions from directly the number of moles calcium hydroxide. So can you locate how many ions are there in calcium hydroxide? A level is always a bit tricky, so you should check how many ions are there in calcium. If you break it, calcium hydroxide. How many ions are in there? So like the amount First, of... Look, look, at, look at his word. Na. He says total number of ions. We find the ratio from the one, but calcium hydroxide. If we take one mole of calcium hydroxide... Calcium hydroxide. So number of moles will be mass over molar mass, and then particles would be that six point zero times ten to the power twenty three. It's it's part A. That's still what I get. From one mole of calcium hydroxide, I will be getting three i three moles of ions. Three moles. I'm getting from this one. Okay. But the problem is that the answer is not matching. I thought we should multiply the answer by three because one mole, because the equation says that one mole is producing one plus two and three mole. Okay. So this is a tricky part. Let me complete my calculation. I have to multiply it by three. Then it becomes 18. Could you understand why I have multiplied by three? No. One mole, look at the equation, one mole, of calcium hydroxide. Look, calcium hydroxide is not iron. If I mark for you, you will understand why A level is so tricky. Look this word iron and see this formula. Is there any iron in this formula presently? No, there's it's a whole compound. It's a I whole think. compound. Actually, it's a it is a compound which will break down into ions. I have broken down into ions. In that iron. case, it will be C A. O and H, that will be three different ions. Ha, and... Ca plus 2 is an ion and OH minus is an ion, hydroxide ion. Okay. So, but that's only two. So like, uh, wait. Two yes, OH, but... right. Okay, okay. It's two OH. That's why it's three. Okay, that makes sense. Achha, now you should see how, they are, how much they are clever. We got a wrong answer. We stopped here. And look, our wrong answer was matching. Our answer of 6 into 10 power 22, was it matching? It was matching with A, right? Yeah. So that was a trick, now. So example, okay. make it always a clever technique. Have you copied this working? Yeah, it's just multiplied by 3, which turns into 1.8. Yep, got it. And also the shifting of power 22 to 23. 100 cm cube of hydrogen is mixed with 25 cm cube of oxygen at a temperature of 150. The gases react as shown. 
the total volume of gas present at the end of the reaction. Let's work it out together. Do you know, in case of gases, in case of gases, molar ratio is the volume ratio. For gases, the ratio of moles is the ratio of their volumes. In gases, ratio of moles is the ratio of their volumes. So what is, what is the ratio? Let me write, write the ratio for you. 2 is to 1 gives me 2. 100 cm cube of hydrogen is mixed with 25 cm cube of oxygen. This is a trick because uh, the ratio is 2 is to 1. If the ratio is 2 is to 1, Shahid, 100 cm cube of hydrogen need how much oxygen? 2 okay. to 2. Two unit of hydrogen needs one unit of oxygen. Two unit of hydrogen needs one unit of oxygen. So by rule, 100 cm cube of hydrogen will need how much oxygen? Okay. Let me know. If I write here 100, what should I write yeah. here in question mark? 50. 50. Very good. Now, how much he has given? Oxygen. Given oxygen to what? Uh, 50 total? Look at the screen. No. How much oxygen is given? 50, no? Because it, the, oh. are you talking about the question mark? Yes. Oh, okay, question mark. Um, oxygen would give uh, 100. He has given yeah. us oxygen less. It is a limiting mm -hmm. reactant. Oh, okay. in, chemistry, in chemistry, what is a limiting reactant? A reactant which is insufficient a reactant which is insufficient and it is it is given in less quantity is called is called the limiting reactant so i okay we write my ratio now i know that oxygen is given less now let me know if i make oxygen 25 cm cube how much hydrogen it will use 75 because no it's ratio one is to two. 50 50 sorry 50 not 75 good Achha. how much oxygen is actually given 25 so, what oh. in the question how much how right. much hydrogen is given hydrogen 100 good and how much i have i how much i have to use 50 so half of it yes so I, it means 50 cm cube of is, gas is still present is in excess so that's the amount of gas present at the end of the reaction no that is a gas which will remain unreacted can you now come on the water side water is also in gas state ratio yep. 2 1 2 how much water will produce from this reaction in cm cube how much water um <clears throat> In CM cube, 75? No, no. Look the ratio. Chemistry works on ratio. For right, example... So 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 uh, CM cube. Now you reach. Chemistry right. doesn't work in maths. Chemistry right, doesn't yeah, yeah. work in sense of mass. So how much is the water? 50 centimeter cube. So let's talk about the products. Water... In a gas form, how much water is produced? 50 centimeter cube. And how much unreacted uh, hydrogen is present? 50 centimeter cube. Okay, look at this working carefully and now read the question. What is asking? The total volume of gas present at the end of the reaction 
is going to be a hundred centimeter cube because it's H two O gas form. Yes. So what is that total volume? The total volume of the entire thing. The total volume of the gas present at the end of the reaction. B. Yeah. Yes. The answer is B. So now you see the questions are very tricky. This is a very good website for chemistry students at Excel students. And they have made a very good collection of chemistry worksheets, very organized. And you should try this website. Uh, this is actually more updated, more updated than the PMT in, in, in terms of for chemistry, actually. They have okay. made some good books and uh, their, their, this website is containing more up-to-date questions. I can also, I will sh share my files okay. also. Obviously, digital files have no limit. Plus, they don't have any record. So you just keep on solving them in media. Sodium nitrate decomposes on heating. What is the maximum volume of oxygen? Now, these words are always very tricky and should be underlined in the paper. He, he uses the word maximum. Yeah. Measured in DMQ at room temperature and pressure. Room temperature and pressure means RTP, which could yeah. be obtained by heating 0.5 mole of sodium nitrate. Molar volume of a gas is 24 DMQ per mole at RTP. Room temperature pressure, this actually is abbreviated as RTP. Equation is in front of you. Chemistry works in ratio of moles. Chemistry works in ratio of moles. Moles, yeah. That is the main idea. Chemistry equations, calculations work on ratio of moles. So I have to somehow work on moles. He has given me that uh, how many moles of sodium nitrate he has given me. Here given... 2 NaNO3, so 2 sodium nitrate from moles. The statement. Ah, from, from the statement. The 0 0.5 mole. 0 yes. 0.5. And look carefully the state symbols. Oxygen is gas. Sodium nitrate is a solid. Sodium nitrate, sodium nitrite is a solid. Yeah. So, what is the ratio? 2, 2, and one. That would be moles, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.25. What, what he's asking me, he's asking for oxygen, right? So if yeah. I put 0.5 here, 0.5 mole from yeah. the ratio, can you tell me how much moles I will get here? 0 0.25. The ratio is 2 is to 1. It means half. Yeah, 0 0.25. And then after this, you would use the formula V is equal to N times 24, right? Uh, I got formula of moles of oxygen. So it will be 6B. Volume is equal to N times 24. 24. EMQ. So do, the, do this calculation. Yeah, it's 6B. An excess of copper 2 oxide is mixed with 40 cm cube of 2.5 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid. The equation is given. Look at the state symbols. A, a good chemistry student 
a good chemistry student will always focus on state symbols even though normally in calculations it can we can work without that but i always focus that you students should see the state symbols now what you have to read the question if the mass of copper two chloride produces 5.5 gram what is the percentage yield of copper two chloride what is the formula for percentage yield mass obtained upon mass expected into 100 yes correct yeah. the in in excess so i start my working i read the question I have to read the question at least twice. I have noticed that he is saying excess. In chemistry, excess means that some of the reactant will not react. Some of the reactants will not react. It will re remain unreacted. 40 cm cube, 2.5 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid. The equation is given. Okay. So let's start with the mole per dm cube. What is mole per dm cube? Look at this unit, mole per dm cube. Mole per dm cube is actually a unit of a unit of mole per dm cube is a unit of concentration mole per dm cube is a unit of concentration and this unit in chemistry is called look at this word okay now what is the formula for molarity if i start from here molarity you should write with me so you have a practice molarity is equal to number of mole upon volume. Number of mole will be equal to mass in, oh, sorry, molarity into volume. What is the molarity given? What is the concentration given? The molarity here is 2.5, right? Yeah, okay. Carefully see the unit. 2.5 mm, dm cubed. And what is the unit of volume given? Dm cubed, which we'll have to convert into dm uh, cubed first. So it means there is an issue here. One, one dm cubed is equal to 1000 cm. This one. No? Yes. So it means so 40 thousand. over. So I can go for this way that I will multiply it with 0. 0.0 0. 0. 0.04, I think. And power minus 3. Yeah. Find the number of moles. 0. 0.1. 0 0.1 and for whom these moles are found? This would be for hydrochloric acid, I think, if I'm not mistaken. It's hydrochloric acid. Yeah, in aqueous form, always. Now, look at the equation. Examiner has generously balanced. I need to establish relation between HCl and copper 2 oxide. So what is the relation here in the equation? 2 is to 1? Yeah. So I will show examiner that HCl and copper oxide is 2 is to 1. So, what would be the number of moles of copper oxide? Moles, oh, this would be ratio is? Yes, double. So mole of oxide. It will be half, so like 0 0.05 moles. 
very good, 0.21. What is the formula for number of moles? Is this the formula for number of moles? Yes, I'm over and over. Uh, now you need to help me. You need to take out the periodic table. And I think we have made a mistake. Mm, double one. Actually, why is M why is M zero point one? No, no, no. Actually, the question it's... started with copper oxide, that's fine. But in part A, look at the question. If the mass of copper two chloride, so okay. we should make a correction. Luckily, we are safe because the ratio will not change. Even though I have made a mistake here, did you identify the mistake? What mistake I did? Yeah, you I put copper oxide instead of uh, copper chloride. The addition was needed between copper chloride. Relation was needed between copper chloride and HCl. Yeah. Now we are luckily safe. And can you tell me how I can find the molar mass of copper or, or is it given? Um, here, wait, is it given? Hold on, Read copper chloride, it's it given 134.4 grams. Very good. So, I will do 0 0.05 into so do this calculation 6.72 grams. So, how much mass is expected? 6.72. And how much we got? Yeah. Read the question. 6.72 and we are expected to be producing 5. Point, uh, so, we, we got 5.5 .5 and we're expecting wow. 6.72. Uh, which will be 5.5 .5 over 6.72, which gives us 81.8%. I'm not sure if you would take it in in decimals. I'm not sure. Look at look at the options. It's uh, matching nicely. Yeah, 81.8A. Yeah. The ionic equation for the reaction this is the main equation. Okay. Copper oxide plus HCl, copper chloride plus H2O. How we make ionic equations? Um, all the ions okay. and cancel the spectator ions. Oh, what are the spectator ions again? Spectator ions are those whose oxidation state does not change throughout. Oxidation number, you remember in O-level chemistry, we had a concept of valency, oxidation number. Yeah, so in this case, it would be... You have to write the equation. Chemistry goes back and back, around and around equations. So let me write the equation first. Okay. See you. See you. So you have to write with me.
So in this case, if anything cancels out, of course, yeah. all of it cancels out. So like in this case, what, uh, what do we remove and what do we keep? In this, in, in, this, in this case, all elements are keeping their oxidation states. You can look at the equation. An examiner have very carefully selected this equation. Copper oxide is a metallic oxide. Metallic oxides are basic in nature. Uh, I am just waiting for you that if you identify this reaction as a famous reaction category. Redox? No, I didn't know. Is this redox? No, wait. It's not, it's not redox. Identify yeah, it again. Do you remember something reacting with acid forming salt and water? Salt preparations. Don't I think neutralization. Right. neutralization, right. Okay, yeah. This is a neutralization reaction because copper oxide is a metallic oxide. Metallic oxides are basic in nature. HCl, let me write for you for memory. It is a base. It is an acid, it is salt, and it is water. Look at this again. Yeah, base acid, salt plus water neutralization. Yeah. So what do we remove? Mm. Do so, we remove the H? No. no okay. H cannot be removed because it's an yeah. acid reaction. Now H cannot be removed because H um, is a small for acid. Okay, then I'm thinking it's equation C. It, it, it is either B or C. A is not there because he's, he's cancelled out hydrogen water. Yeah, uh, I th I, I, for, for me, I think it's C, but I'm not sure because, because in this case, a, C is making in, a C is making a trick. Actually, he is he has written copper chloride back. Look at this trick. This is nothing in ionic form, actually. Oh, okay. Copper yeah. chloride again. It just shows the charges. That's about it. Uh, it just shows the charges. This is not an ionic equation. Secondly, the state symbol H2O is an aqueous uh, H2O. With uh, copper chloride is aqueous form, so the answer is B. Okay. Some facts about copper two chloride are given below. Which of these gives the best evidence that the bonding in copper two chloride is ionic? Read this question. Okay, some possible. Okay. Some facts about copper two chloride are given below. Which of these gives the best evidence that the bonding in copper two chloride is ionic? I'm thinking six twenty. Remember, remember ionic. This is a this is a question on bonding actually. Bonding copper chloride is a link between metal and non-metal. Bond between a metal and a non-metal is normally ionic. Ionic compounds have a high melting point. Does it right? Is it right that they do not conduct electricity? Mm, as no, solid? it does. It does conduct as a salt. No, I'm not in sure. ion, it doesn't. Ion solid. When ions are in solid state, they do not conduct electricity. Yeah, yeah. I thought I was talking about copper alone, but copper chloride. I think it's a it has a melting temperature of six hundred twenty Celsius. Ah, uh, maybe like that. But he's, yes. uh, he has highlighted the word best. Best evidence. Would it be the electron density map has no contour lines? 
in the electron density map, there are no contour lines around more than one nucleus. What does this mean? I was going to ask, what does contour lines mean? Is it like... Actually, uh, electron density map, electron density map is a map which we used to show as a dotted the electronegativity difference. And he says that copper two chloride are given below. These all are these all are right actually. It has a melting point around six twenty. That's right. It does not conduct electricity. That's also right. It decomposes before it reaches its boiling temperature. Uh, this is also right. It decomposes. Interestingly, all the options are nearly correct. But he says which of them gives the best evidence? that the bonding in copper 3 chloride is ionic ionic bond you have to revise that in an ionic okay. bond in an ionic bond there is no electronegativity difference the electrons uh, ionic bond actually exists like this exists like this look at this carefully no electron density difference If you make with me, you will remember it. There are no. This is ionic bond. No shifting of electron cloud. So I'm I'm not sure about the answer. What will it be? I have uh, nearly shown you the things and. Uh... Let me forward you the definition for counter lines. Uh, I have forwarded you the diagram because the diagrams are not required to be drawn. But in order to, when you sh look at it, you will remember what I am talk talking about. It's a shift of electron cloud. Okay. And this happens when one atom is more electronegative than the other and the bond becomes covalent. Mm, where's the dotted lines and, and the dashed ones on these? Uh, Basically, this, this is a simple diagram. Dotted lines are not necessarily shown. This is actually, okay. this is actually the point is there the shifting of electron density. So, as copper chloride is an ionic solid, the electron there are no contour lines around more than one nucleus. So there are no okay. contour lines because it is not a covalent. Actually, the Electron density map should is normally used for covalent compounds. Okay, so here it, it's like because uh, a chloride would just gain one of copper's outer shell electrons, and then like... it is a pure ionic solid, and uh, there is no transfer of shifting of electron density. Okay. A compound has the composition 62.1% carbon, 10.3 hydrogen, 27.6 oxygen. What is its empirical formula? What is the mass of carbon in our periodic table? 12. And what about hydrogen? That's just going to be 10.3. 
and, and twenty seven point six over sixteen. So the first one is five point one seven five. Five point one seven five. Ten point three and one point seven two five. So if we now simplify it, it will be three ratio. You're dividing by 1.725, right? Yes, yes, the smallest number. So it will be 361. So it will be C386O, which is option D. Twenty-five cm cube of one mole per dm cube sulfuric acid is fully neutralized by a fifty cm cube of one mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide. What is the concentration of sodium sulfate solution produced by the reaction in mole per dm cube? Twenty-five cm one will be zero point zero two five one. This will be if it, if there was an equation, it will be the ratios, right? H two SO four. Yeah. It's going to be all one. I mean, if you balance it now, right? Balance it. Yeah, yeah I'm balancing it. Uh, so four is balanced, two is balanced, O is balanced. H2, no, H is not balanced. Hold on. Yeah, that's not balanced either. I have two, two H2. Oh, and then that's balanced. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that should be balanced, no? Yep. And then So the equation is balanced. Okay, so do I find the moles of the NaOH first or H2SO4 or I can do either? No, you have yes. to formula I had already mentioned to you, no? N is equal to M V. Um, yeah, it's like, it's like the 24 and all that. Yeah. Okay. After the but No, that's gas, sorry. Um, okay, I got it. Hold on. Um, yeah. This is the formula? Yeah, P is equal to you. So we got the sulfuric acid moles. Zero point zero two five. And then this zero two five. Is also going to be zero point zero two five. Why? No, for for Na two SO four. Oh, okay. You're doing NaOH. Sorry. Um. Yeah, Na two SO four is a question. No? I can't go for it. Okay. Equation says H two SO four and NaOH ratio should be one is to two. Yeah. So what we are getting in our calculation? One is to two. Look at our working, 25.
So ratio is yeah. matching. Yeah, it's so matching. No, no limiting reactant. Now ratio, no limiting reactant. So anything can be used. Yeah. In this case, we'll just do N, not with the M, V. So you, you can use any one of them, H2SO4 or NOH. You can use any one of them. You need to find Na2SO4. And, uh, there's no, oh, that's the concentration. There's no volume given though. Ah, but first find the moles now. Yeah, the moles would be because it's ratio wise, right? Yes. It will just be 0, 0. 0. Wait, no. You can make ratio yeah. between SO4 and Na2SO4. It's 1 is to 1. Yeah, yeah, it's 0. 0.025 then. But then there's no MV, wait. So, no, we, we know the formula, no? M uh, oh, wait, wait, no, I got it. I think, wait, no, is it? Molarity is equal to number of mole upon volume. Molarity formula. What would be the total volume? 24. Um, it was no. 25. 25 sulfuric acid and uh, 50. 75 is the total volume. Yep. So divide by 75. Divide by 75, we get 3.33 times 10 to the power minus 4. Check the answer. What answer is there? Uh, it's, oh, sorry, sorry. It won't be 75, sorry. Um, that makes sense now. It would be in, in DM, right? So it would be zero point zero two five. Minus two power minus three. Yep, minus three, which is zero point three three, which is part D. Very good. So part D is the right answer. So we yep. keep it up to here, and uh, okay. we'll continue it in our next class. We have done a good number of questions. Look. This is a way we should practice actually, and we will inshallah continue in our next class. Allah Hafiz. Oh, okay. Okay, Allah Hafiz.